Hello and welcome back to Universal Class. In this lesson, we're going to discuss working with cells, rows, and columns. Selecting cells. Like any other Office program, Excel 2013 allows you to copy cells, then paste them into the same spreadsheet or workbook, or into an entirely different file. When you copy the data, you are transferring a copy to another location. We're not removing it when we use copying and pasting options. If you desire to move the data from its original location to another location, then you would use the cut and paste mode. However, before copying any cells, rows, or columns, you first have to select or highlight them. Selecting data in Excel is a little different than selecting text in a word processing program, and this is because you must select cell. To select a cell, click on the cell. A green border appears on it. Let's do another uh, simple spreadsheet, but we're going to do a work schedule. And it's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And uh, actually, let's just click all these and get them to be the same width. Maybe actually just a little bit wider. There we go. I think we're going to be able to fit all the data in there. OK. And let's do uh, Larry, Mo, Curly. And uh, we're going to be charting their the number of hours that they've worked for each of these days. So let's just say that Larry uh, worked eight hours on Monday. Mo worked three hours on Monday. And Curly worked five hours on Monday. All right, there's a few ways you can do a copy of cells. So let's take uh, Larry's eight hours on Monday. We're going to click on that. Now we can copy this data by using our PC keyboard. We can do Control C and that copies it. And notice the rotating kind of marquee display running around the cell. That is telling us that we've copied this cell. Now, to paste this information somewhere else, say he, Larry also worked eight hours on Tuesday. So we want to copy this information into this cell. Well, we click on the destination cell here, and we can do Control V, as in vase, Control V, and that copies it. So that is the keyboard shortcut to copy and paste one cell into the other. Now, there's another way you can do it, which is uh, I'm going to hit escape here to, to put everything back to normal, is that we can highlight the cell we want to copy, which is eight hours on Monday, and we can right click on it, and we can also select copy. So in order to copy that data using the mouse to Wednesday, we right click to the destination cell. Not left click, right click. And when we right click to the destination cell, we have a bunch of options uh, to paste. And normally, we can do a paste of values if it's a formula we want to do and, uh, and a bunch of paste options. But this will be just a normal paste, so we just do that. And that's all we have to do. You can also copy rows and columns. And the way we do this is we highlight the row. So let's say Larry has 888. Eight, eight. Let's add a few more numbers here, 5 and 4 for Larry. So Row two has Larry's hours, Monday through Friday. So let's say we want to copy this row. So we uh, click on Larry. Now we can either do Control C to copy the row, or we can right click here and select copy. To paste him, or to copy him, copy this information somewhere else, we just go to the destination row that we would like to paste this information. So let's say we want to put we wanted to duplicate this row onto row five. So let's right click on row five and select any one of these paste options, but this is just a normal paste. And uh, we click paste and there it is. The same would also hold true for columns. Say we want to copy Monday column. So we click on Monday, we can select copy. It's ready to be copied. Now we right click over to column G here and we select Paste. Pasting cells, rows, and columns. When you're copying cells, what you're really doing is you're 
copying them and pasting them into this clipboard, which is this area that exists that you can't really see, but it's sort of a holding area for all of the stuff that you're copying. Pasting to the clipboard is automatic whenever you select copy or cut. The clipboard will hold up to 24 different selections so that you do not have to paste them right away. So to find that information, this is under your home tab and this is under the clipboard group. And if we click here, this will show us everything that's in our clipboard. Currently there is nothing in our clipboard, but let's copy a few things. Let's copy Larry. Now Larry's in the clipboard. Let's copy Mo. Oops. Let's copy Mo. Now Mo is in the clipboard. Let's copy Curly. Now Curly's in the clipboard. Now let's also copy this column. And that column is in the clipboard. So now we have this access to this clipboard with everything that we've been copying so that we can copy multiple things into the clipboard and not have to paste them right away. This is a very important feature, so please make note of it. To paste any of these to any other destination in our spreadsheet, what we can do is go to a cell, such as we're going to go to A8 here, and let's say we want to paste the curly in here. So we just click on curly from the, from the clipboard. Now let's say we want to, let's come over here, and we want to, we're in uh, H1 here, we want to paste Monday again here. So we're in the area that we want to paste it and we select paste. To close the clipboard, just hit this X here and we can go back to normal spreadsheet view. Everything is still there in the clipboard. Again, you can, uh, again, you just click this uh, bottom arrow key in the clipboard group and you can see everything that you have saved to your clipboard. Paste special. Excel 2013 also gives you a lot of paste options to choose from. When you go to paste using the paste tool on the ribbon or right click on the cell to paste, you can see a half dozen or so little icons appear giving you different ways to paste the data. So let's say we have this eight here and we have now copied it and now we want to paste it down here. And we go to paste and look at all these paste options that we've seen before. And we have even more depending on how we want to paste this information. Anyway, there's so many different ways that you can paste the data this can be confusing. The Paste Special feature makes it a little easier. Paste Special is a dialog box that allows you to specify how you want to paste the data. Right now, we're talking about fairly basic Excel features, but later in the course, as you start to use Excel yourself more frequently, you'll find Paste Special to be more and more of help to you. The Paste Special feature can be found on the Paste drop-down menu under the Home tab in the Clipboard group. It can also be found in the Context menu wherever you right-click on a cell or a selection of cells. If you click the Paste Special dialog box, will appear. So this is the Paste Special dialog box. And basically this is telling you how do you want to paste this information. And if you're copying something that has a formula, you can tell Excel, no, I want you to paste the result of the formula, the number, or no, I want you to paste the formula, but not the calculation of it, and other sorts of things. Again, this is all uh, fairly advanced functions, particularly when you're dealing, dealing with very complex worksheets, workbooks, and you will want more options on how the resulting copied information is displayed and interpreted. Inserting rows and columns. Naturally, there are going to be times when you create a worksheet and then realize that you need another row or column. Since most of the data is already entered, it's too much trouble to use copy and paste to move every column to the right or every row down. Instead, it's easier just to insert a new row or column into the worksheet. The way we do this is we select the column that comes after the column where we want the new column to appear. For example, I'm going to delete Tuesday. We created this work schedule for Larry, Moe, and Curly, and we entered Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and a couple Mondays here but we suddenly realize, oh wait, we forgot Tuesday. Hmm. So what we do to insert Tuesday is we highlight the column that comes after Monday, because that's where we want Tuesday to appear. We right click here and we select insert. And there it is. Now we can enter Tuesday. 
and we can enter necessary data. This also works for rows. If I have Larry, Moe, and Curly here, and then I have Larry again, but let's say I want to add Doug after Curly. So I highlight the row that comes after Curly, and I select Insert. And now I can put in Doug and enter some data for Doug. You can also do this with inserting cells. Now, inserting cells is a little bit different than inserting rows and columns. When you insert rows and columns, you probably don't have to worry about the integrity of your data because you're shifting all columns to the right or left, or you're shifting all rows up and down. When you start dealing with inserting cells into areas, you could throw off your data, so you just want to be careful. When you decide to insert a cell, you can select how you want to insert it. So let's say we want to insert a cell here into uh, Curly's Monday hours. Our intention, let's say, is to move Mondays and Tuesdays hours to Tuesdays and Wednesdays hours and enter a different value for Mondays hours. So rather than retyping in all this information, we could just right click on the cell and say insert and then it's going to say, it's going to ask us, what do we want to do? Do we want to shift these cells down, shift them to the right, or do we want to actually add an entire row or column? In this particular case, we wanted to shift the cells to the right. So let's do that. We click on OK, and now everything has been shifted to the right, and we can now enter Monday's hours for Curly, which were six. There's also, we've been using a lot of right-clicking menu, context menus for doing uh, inserting and copying uh, cells, but it's also available under the Home tab under the Cells group here. Uh, gives you many options for uh, inserting, deleting, and formatting your cells as well. All right, filling cells with a series of data, the auto fill feature. So let's just clear this spreadsheet for now. Remember those tests in school where the teacher would make you number a piece of paper from 1 to 10? Have you ever used Excel to make a list and put a number in a cell by typing one number at a time? So let's say we wanted to number our cells going across as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That seems a little tedious. Well, there's an easier way to do that. Thank goodness. Excel can detect patterns. And the way we can use this is we can highlight the pattern. And then you see this uh, extra little box down here uh, at the right corner of the cell. We click on that and stretch it. And it'll continue the number series just like that. Now, Excel is really interesting in, I deleted that, uh, detecting patterns. What if we did two? four, six. We're counting by twos. Let's see what Excel can do when we say, oh, continue the pattern. Oh, it figures it out for us. That's really neat. This could also work with dates. One, one, two, one, three, one. Will Excel figure out this pattern? Let's highlight the pattern. Oh, and it does. Autofill is a great way to enter pattern data quickly. There's a few things to remember when using the autofill feature. When you drag, go like this, two. You need at least two numbers for a pattern for Excel to figure it out. It can't figure out if you enter one what to do. So if we drag from left to right, uh, the pattern will increase. It'll be in ascending order. Let's go with a different pattern here. Uh, 12, 11, 11. If we uh, drag to the left, it'll be in descending order. If we drag up, okay, let's talk about a new feature that's specific to Excel 2013, and that's the flash fill. Flash fill allows you to take part of the data out of one column and enter the same type of data in a new column quickly with just a few keystrokes. The series of entries appear in the new column once Excel figures out the pattern in your original data 
so it knows what to copy. So we have full name, first, last. And let's do Okay, so you can see here that uh, we have full names of employees in column C here, full name. In the second and third columns, we want to separate their first and last names into those respective columns, which can be a pain to retype and copy and paste each item. So in the first name cell, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and type the name John. When you're finished, hit the downward arrow key on your keyboard. Now type M for Mary, and it automatically comes up. And then it automatically flash fills everything for you. Now let's go to the last name and start to type in Jones. Hit the down arrow key. We begin to type in Smith, and then it fills in the rest. And that is flash fill. As you can see, Excel detects the pattern in the data and fills in the cells for you. Multiple entries. If you have several cells that you want to enter the same data into, you can do this very quickly and easily. Let's say you want to add the number 43 into seven cells within your spreadsheet. Instead of scrolling through your spreadsheet and entering it in seven different times, you can do this. First, using the control button on your keyboard, select multiple we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We selected multiple cells, seven of them. And we want to have all of these cells that we've now highlighted to have the number 43 in them. In the active cell, type the data that you want, 43. Now we want 43 to appear in the other highlighted cells. We do control enter at the same time. This will fill all the cells for you. Yet another really useful.